don't know what I want to paint. I want to paint something, but none of my 40k armies, none of my 40k heroes and characters, not even my kill teams, but I want to paint something. And that is actually a great spot to be in. Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle. I've been going through a bit of a no motivation spell, and that is probably because I have too many projects going on at once. I have like four kill teams that are all between 20 and 30% complete, so not even past the halfway point. They would all take a bunch of effort that I am just not in the mood for right now. You ever get into a mood like that, where nothing looks good to you? I wanna finish stuff, I should finish stuff, but I don't wanna force it and risk burning out or doing a bad rush job. What I need is a nice, simple project, something different to get the painting juices flowing again. And sometimes inspiration falls right out of the sky. These are models from Black Crag Miniatures, more on them in a little bit. They are some nice little goblins, definitely not my usual subjects, but that is good because I am not in the mood for painting my usual stuff. Sorry Space Marines, you will have to wait on the project shelf a little while longer. These models are fun and funny looking, but that's the thing about goblins. They're little fun loving monsters, but they have a darker side, perhaps a grim dark side. And that really got me inspired. Grim dark, what does that even mean? It's why I love 40K, but I've never really been able to put it into words. Grim dark is art that is grim and dark. It's in the name, but that's not all it is. I think pure grim dark is things like the paintings of H.R. Giger or Zindistraf Beskinski. Their art is haunting and gorgeous and I love it, but I can't hang out there all day. It's a fun place to visit, but not to stay. On the flip side, I can live in the world of 40k all day long. Why is that? 40k is supposedly grim dark, so what is the difference? Well, I think it is because 40k balances grim dark with fun. In my opinion, grim dark isn't the be all end all. And before you flame me alive in the comments, let me finish. No, I am not saying grim dark sucks. I am saying grim dark is best represented when you have a dichotomy. Grim, scary, dark, depressing, nasty, gross on one side and funny, silly, whimsical, and ridiculous on the other. What is it about 40K that is grim dark? And how does Games Workshop show us they are committed to grim dark? Well, it's probably not the models. The only model I can think of that is really grim dark is this demonette with a harp, the infernal and rapturous. And again, it's all about that dichotomy. It could have just been a demonette with a little blood on her sword but instead it's a musician playing a harp, an instrument associated with classiness and culture. But it's a nasty monster playing a song on a man's tendons. It's grim and ridiculous. It's the lore of 40K that makes it grim dark, and that's what makes this sad, depressing universe not just bearable to hang out in, but positively fun. Grim dark is awesome, but it's also emotionally exhausting. Having a balance of grim dark with silliness is what makes 40K what it is. The disturbed mysteriousness of Grim Dark, punctuated by the over the top antics of the factions involved. Space Marines are noble and heroic, but also genetically engineered child soldiers. Orcs are a galactic cancer, destroying planet after planet, but when you meet one, they are silly and stupid. I think that's why I've stuck with 40k for nearly a decade, but never really got into games like Marvel Crisis Protocol. I just feel like I get it. The Hulk is just the Hulk. You read a comic book? It's like that but my Necrons can be anything I need them to be. Honorable, regal, evil, conniving. The factions of 40K are a real Swiss army knife of possibilities with that badass backdrop of Grim Dark. I had a long, hard think about Grim Dark and that is what brought me out of this painting stupor. With these little goblins at first glance, all I saw was silliness. And that first made me not feel like I needed to paint them. Silly goblins will still be silly goblins if I paint them green but grim, dark silly goblins. Now that's an idea worth pursuing. I often find that it's hard to experiment on my models because usually I need them to be a success, either for a video or a quickly approaching game night. But on these guys, I really wanna try some stuff. And experimenting is always a great idea because it gives you a, not, a lot more knowledge and experience to work off of. And then you can take those ideas if they were a success and apply them to the rest of your models. So on these guys, I wanna try out a bunch of new stuff and starting off with the bases. I have done wooden floor bases before, but I want these to look more disheveled and uneven than my previous attempts. So I broke out some milliput, a two-part epoxy putty, 
I mix the two halves together and then squish them down randomly onto the bases. I wetted my fingers so that the milliput won't stick and I smushed and smoothed the milliput down into thin uneven layers on each base. Just in case some of the milliput ends up being visible between my wooden slats, I used a toothbrush to make some texture. And now I have some nice ground, it's time to make my scale boards. I took out some coffee stir sticks, and so that I could easily distress them, I taped them together so that they were stuck right where I wanted them. I'm only weathering one side, so I made a mark with a sharpie so that I can instantly see what side I want facing up. Then I began my usual routine of sanding, but it just wasn't giving me the grit I wanted, so I began attacking the boards with an X-Acto knife. This was kind of a desperate attempt, and I assumed it would not work or be too tedious, but really it was a quick process and really mangled the boards just how I wanted them. Now with my boards properly distressed, I began gluing them down to the milliput. At first I was applying the glue to the wood, but later I found it easier to put the glue on the milliput, and then smush the boards down. And boom! Cool looking wooden bases. Now I want to create a new detail in the mini, a nose lead like you might see on a cow. I took a piece of floral wire, bent it into a loop around a handle, and then I clipped it off with some old nippers. Then I stretched it so I could slide it off the handle. Then I took some scale chain and threaded it around the loop, then I took the loop and shoved it right in the nostrils of the troll. I want this goblin to be leading the troll along, so I clipped off the mushroom he was carrying and made two little dents with my hobby knife. Then I measured out how much chain I needed and clipped it. I threaded the end of the chain in this new loop and then attached it to the grot's clenched fist, and then to lock the chain in place I soaked it in super glue. I primed these fellas black, and I was loving how they looked. And speaking of how great these models are, let's talk about this video sponsor. Black Crag Miniatures is a Patreon creating some of the best orc minis you can get. They are sculpted with exaggerated proud features that make them a joy to paint. Sometimes 3D sculpted minis can look great in the render, but are nearly impossible to paint. Not so with these. Black Crag Miniatures test prints and paints their minis to ensure they are perfect. Every month they come out with a full roster of pre-supported minis, and when you sign up you will receive four sci-fi goblins. All of their previously released minis are available from Cults 3D and My Mini Factory, but if you want to be first to get a hold of some great minis, check out their Patreon linked in the description below if you want to add some stunning orc warriors to your collection. But with that said, let's get back to the goblins. So I have my goblins all primed up, and I want them to be nice green goblins. So, first step is to give them a base coat, and that base coat is going to be, of course, orange. I loaded some orange into my airbrush and sprayed this onto the models from above in a zenithal style. This really gave the models a nice warmth that I wouldn't have gotten with a classic white. I've zenithal not base coated them with orange using the airbrush, and I think it looks really, really cool as is. Why would I zenithal them orange and not white? Well, I'm hoping that what's going to happen is if I had zenithaled them white, they would have looked a little bit desaturated because as things get lighter, they're going to get closer to white. But now, with my guys orange, the lightest possible color is going to be bright golden orange. So hopefully this will lead to much more colorful and vibrant minis. In my quest for a grim dark paint job, I want to only use colors in the red-green side of the color wheel and completely ignore any cold colors. This should make my models feel like they are in a realistic environment. Hope it works. I loaded up my palette with the paint I would need, some greens, a brown, a red, a black and white of course, and I almost forgot, yellow. I started by taking my lime green and watering it down to the point where it was just like a wash. I took this and spread it all over the skin. It will look like it's pooling, but as it dries it'll lighten up a lot. This will not cover up the orange, but rather tint it into a green. I found that two coats of this gave me the sickly yellow green I was after. Then I used my darker green and again watered it down to almost nothing, and applied that to some areas of the goblin that I wanted darker. Then I mixed up a beige color, watered it down to almost nothing, and spread this onto some parts of the goblin. I ended up liking this mixture on the knees and belly. I went back in and corrected it with green on his head and back. Next I watered down my brown and spread this all over his cloth bits, his straps, undies, and loincloth. This is really a tint and I am taking advantage of the orange underneath. I made up a darker brown so that I could get more contrast into these cloth parts. Then I spread this dark brown onto the wooden floor as well. Wow, that worked really, really well and really, really fast. I wonder just how fast. I think I'm going to paint up the second grot, and I'm going to time myself. I painted up the second goblin start to finish in 19 minutes and 28 seconds. And then I rolled right into the third, and that one I really put the pedal to the metal and finished it in a crazy 13 minutes and 58 seconds. This glazing on really thin layers of paint doesn't sound like a fast process, but it really is. Especially when I was using my hairdryer to speed up the drying time. It was just a few seconds. So my goblins are essentially done right now, and I actually had a pretty good time painting them. 
It's been a while since I have completed a project without breaking out the airbrush a bunch, but glazing and washing actually worked really, really well in these models. But I can't say they're grim dark. They're a little bit too clean and bright for that. But that's okay, because I can do grim dark now. It's a lot like weathering. You have to paint a model clean before you can make it dirty. I broke out some Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Median. I spread Agrax all over his clothing and then applied the wash medium over top of it, blending the two right on the model. So really this is like a 50-50 mix of wash and medium. I find it's safer to go thinner with washes. Then I can always go back and add more if it's not looking dark enough. On my troll, his skin got a little too dark, so I used a dry brush to brighten it back up a little bit. And then while I had my dry brush out, I used it to dry brush a little bit of light gray onto his hammer and the other goblin's daggers. Then I applied a light brown to the straps on the troll's clothing. Now for this whole project, I have been using a cheapy cheap plastic Walmart brush that is almost the same size as the gremlins. But it was finally time to break out a real brush because now it's time for the eyes. I base coated them red as I want a very bloodshot look. Then I mixed red with white 50-50 and applied this mixture over top. Then I made a just slightly off-white and finished off the whites of his eyes. Then came the nerve-wracking part, adding tiny, tiny black dot pupils. Now he looks suitably crazy. On the troll, I went a different way. I want him to have blind eyes, so I mixed up two light grays and then worked my way up to pure white. This was a little easier, as his eyes are way bigger than the goblins. Then I took my red and gave all my gremlins some micro scratches, as if they are all cut up from getting into fights, probably with each other. I am using thin paint and just dragging the very fine tip of my brush across the models. Then I added some blood. Blood for the blood god, that is. I stippled this onto the gremlins' weapons and onto the bases. I used it sparingly. I don't want to draw attention away from the models. Just add another macabre element to grim up their dark. On the troll, I added even more grossness. I took some Vallejo texture paste and applied this to the front of his hammer. Then I went over it with Blood for the Blood God. Now it looks disturbingly like real gore on that hammer. These fellows were fun. The last step was to paint that old base rim black. It always happens without fail. When I'm feeling a little burnt out, tackling a project with no obligations, no color scheme I have to stick to, no lore, no heraldry, not even box art to look at. Those are the projects that always lead to the best outcomes. Maybe it's just because I have no expectation of what it'll look like. Like my Black Templar, it's a formula. Step one, step two, step three, finished. But these guys, these guys kept surprising me. I was a little worried looking at the renderings that these were just some silly goblins, but now I have painted them and they are mean, nasty little monsters. And I think I pulled off a suitably grim paint job. And speaking of grim, I see a little darkness as well, and before I said that the lore is what makes things really grim dark, and I have some lore for these fellas. These goblins are a gang. Five nasty little creatures who call themselves the Dreaded Knives. They think of themselves as the smartest, fastest, deadliest warriors that stalk the realm. But really, there is nothing special about these goblins, and they would have been stomped out long ago if it were not for the blind troll that they have co-opted into their crew. Although they claim to care for this poor creature, in reality they use him as their muscle and protection, prodding, pushing, or dragging him unwillingly towards their enemies, letting him fight their battles for them, while they do little else but sneer and brandish their rusty blades. I am very satisfied with these minis, and I think it's the orange undercoat that really made them special. I haven't really done something like that before, and just to test that theory, I painted up a fifth goblin using a classic white zenithal, but doing everything else exactly the same. And it still looks pretty good, but its colors are more desaturated. That orange subtly altered every color I laid on top of it, and it makes my goblins look much more alive. Like they have red blood pumping under their skin. I really like it, and I can't wait to try and paint more models with a different colorful undercoat. It was really fun to think about Grim Dark, what it means, and how to paint in a Grim Dark way. So I have a big ask for you, the viewer. Let me know in the comments what does Grim Dark mean to you? And how do you feel about 40k and its relationship with Grim Dark? Really spill your guts out. I will read everything. I want to know. And if you want to know how you can best support us making videos, then Patreon is the place for you. Over there, we have lots of high quality terrain SCLs available and is the best way to support us making videos. In addition to great grimdark terrain, you will also gain access to one exclusive video a week, some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, and more. Another great way to support us is by checking out our merch. You can follow the link in the description below to our shirts and sweatshirts with some fun hobby related designs. Also again, a big thanks to Black Crag Miniatures for sponsoring this video and allowing me to spend days investigating all things grimdark. 
I painted his goblins because that's what spoke to me, but his orc soldiers are top notch and he is working on some jetpack boys which has me super excited as I have always wanted to add some to my orc army, but Games Workshop's offerings are, let's just say, prohibitively priced.